So one of the most common consults we get as hematologists is mild thrombocytopenia, uh, and particularly persistent isolated mild thrombocytopenia. Patient shows up, their platelet count is between 100 and 150,000. We don't know why. Uh, is, does this patient need workup? You know, we ask them. They don't have a significant family history of thrombocytopenia to make us think of hereditary thrombocytopenia syndrome. Do they have a form frust of ITP? Do they have a pre-ITP state? Perhaps some of them have other autoimmune problems. Perhaps not. Uh, the question has arisen, what, what do we do with these patients? And it's a long question. This is a common problem. We actually recently did a study um, at, at Massachusetts General Hospital looking at patients with persistent isolated mild thrombocytopenia um, and a very long-term look at patients. Patients that were initially diagnosed with this back in the 90s, the early 2000s. So we have a large window of follow-up, a median of about 21 years of follow-up duration to look at, are these patients developing hematologic neoplasms? Are they developing immune thrombocytopenia at higher rates than age and sex matched controls, okay? <laughs> And looking at this, we found that, in fact, they are. Um, the the uh, 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 hazard ratio of development of uh, real hematologic pathology in these patients is about 20, um, so considerably higher. And when we look at the, the Kaplan-Meier curves, we see that you know, approximately 25% of patients have developed ITP at 15 years, uh, approximately uh, 15 to 20% of patients have developed a myeloid or lymphoid ne uh, hematologic neoplasm at the same uh, uh, amount of time. So we recognize that uh, these patients are in fact, do appear to be in fact at significantly increased risk. Now this was, this study was done before the advent of next generation sequencing. So some of these patients may in fact have had hereditary thrombocytopenia syndromes that were unrecognized. But, but I think it's important to recognize that um, these patients who we, for the longest time, have really thought of, well, you know, you're probably fine. Most of them probably are fine, but a significant subset, about a third of them, over two to three decades, really do appear to develop some serious pathology. And the rates of mortality in this group were, were considerably higher than age-matched controls. The rates of uh, severe bleeding episodes uh, down the line were higher. So it, it really is uh, uh, you know, something that probably we need to develop, oh, certainly we need to develop clinical guidelines for, but probably we need to be paying a little bit more attention for it. Uh, uh, figuring out what kind of workup is necessary in this age of next generation sequencing, what kind of workup is necessary for these patients when they present at diagnosis.